Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today's episode is about weaponizing business cards. Of course, business cards are kind of uh, most normal things in the world, but they are edgy, so there is potential to weaponize them. But let me first explain how I gotten the idea for this episode. I was approached by three young founders who created a startup company called liquidbeam.com and um, they actually have a project that's called Elia and it's a very interesting thing, it's actually an innovation and they asked me if I would help them along giving them some attention and doing a review for them and of course I'm always eager to help fellow inventors. So I had a look at the uh, product and I have to say it's very interesting and it's very new. Their idea is to combine a lamp, like a light, uh, you know, a ceiling light, um, with a heater. So that uh, you, at the same time you have a heating system and you have light. And um, that all controlled just by a light switch. It is an Indiegogo campaign at this time. Actually the link is down there and they're starting today. Same day as the release of this video. And they actually sent me a 3D printed prototype. And it's fully functional. You can still see it's 3D printed. I guess final production ones will look even nicer. And it is a light with a display. I love things that have a display. And of course I'm awfully interested in these things because you may or may not know this, but my original career was in consumer electronics. I've been a manager in consumer electronics for a long, 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 long time, many, many years. And who knows, maybe I have to go back to that profession someday soon because YouTube doesn't really place a lot of ads in front of my videos anymore. Sadly. Well, anyway, they sent me this in order to give it a review, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, I think we need to open it first to see what's inside, and also we need to open it to connect the cables. And I think this is just simply held together by magnets. Yes, exactly. So these are oops, four magnets, and then the lid comes off easily. Pretty big piece for 3D printed. So here you can see the actual heater. See the spiral? That is the heater. That will probably be red hot when the thing is running in full speed. Of course the cables are rather thick for light, but that's because there's a 2000 watt heater integrated. And also there is a small fan and that is needed so that the warm air kind of sinks down on you, much like in an airplane. Very cool. And you can also see that there's electronics inside. There's a little bit here, but I think most of the electronics is actually in this compartment here. And I believe that of course they had to put some kind of a microcontroller or something in there, because this thing has programs and it also controls this display. So there must be a certain amount of intelligence in the design. And um, well, I think we just simply connect it and see how it works. All right, this is where I put it, exactly where I need both light and heat in front of my workbench and um, so of course it's a rather makeshift electricity but that's because I have to give it back unfortunately. I hope that the Indiegogo campaign makes it so I can order mine. Anyway, if you switch this on you see that the light goes on. Pretty bright, I think that's full speed. But you can also see that there is a P1 that now disappears and this means that it lets me adjust things. So for example now after a few initial rounds the heating is off and the fan isn't there, but I, uh, if I switch this off and pause for a while, then I can go simply by clicking it on and off again to program 2. And now actually I have both the heat, oh it's already pretty warm, and of course also I have the downstream of the air from here. It's very nice. Not bad. And of course there's no programs. Also you can see the temperature is displayed up there. I think that's rather cool too. And now what I can do is, I can switch this off again, pause for a moment, and then go to program 3, which as you see is a dimmed version of the light. And you see program 5 is even darker, and now it's just a little bit, and now I'm at program 1 again. So this means that simply with your light switch, the existing light switch, you can program this. And that's what I really like because you know, I don't want to start a phone app in order to switch on my light. This is exactly the user interface that I want when I switch on my light. 
And that's a pretty good light. Actually, that's the best light here in my workbench that I ever had. Powerful LEDs. So, what do I think about this? <laughs> I actually think it's a very, very, very cool idea. And I like the design. But it's not just a gadget. It's actually, it, what it is, it's a problem solver. You know, like here, this is an unheated workspace and in the winter it can get fairly cold. And sometimes even my t-shirt isn't enough to keep me warm. So this is great. And it also warms your hands when you're working. But this may also really work for like a com cold computer workplace where you're sitting in front of your computer and your hands are getting cold when you're typing. You probably know how that is. So, and it also is an ideal upgrade if you have a, sp a spot where there is a lamp and a light switch but no heating, this is perfect. So I can also see this working in bathrooms and so on. It's, of course, actually, it's not inexpensive, although I think if you are an early bird and go on to their campaign, you can get like 40% discounts and so on. But it's like a $250 lamp, but I think it's worth it. I actually have bought lamps with no heater that have been far more expensive. So, I think these guys did a great job, and I encourage you to look at their Indigo work campaign. They deserve to get it financed. So that is a very cool project, and I definitely will go ahead and reserve two for me. <laughs> you know, I don't really want my gelatin any to freeze anymore. And I was like, how do I bridge over from a light that also is a heater to something that shoots and destroys things? Well, came back to their business cards, which is their brochure, really. And, um, you know, then I thought maybe we can weaponize those. We weaponize a lot of things, but no business card so far. So, here is my take. So let's test what a business card can do against the block of ballistic gelatin, specifically prepared for this occasion. All right, did I forget something? All right. <laughs> okay, now, of course, this is cardboard. So this means that if you hold it like this and try to cut something with it, it will wobble and then fail. The trick is that you have to hold it so that only a short little piece pokes out. And I found out that you can really do this easily if you put it in between the stack of other cards so that only a little tip pokes out. And to make this easier, what you can even do is, you can fold the edges over, like that, so that it's nice and firmly in place. And now what you have is really a little bit like a Stanley knife, just made from cardboard. Okay, let's see if we can do a damage to this ballistic gelatin block. Ha ha ha! Look at that! That is definitely some nice sharp little paper cut. Wow! And as you see, our little paper knife was completely undamaged. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, of course we weaponized playing cards before, but if you compare a playing card to a business card, you can see that actually business cards are better for that purpose. Because, first of all, they're very edgy, whereas playing cards are rounded, and also they are thicker. It's just a little bit thicker cardboard, and therefore they are more sturdy. Of course, you can throw these just like a playing card, but as you know from my previous episodes, I can't do it. I'm kind of an idiot if it comes to throwing cards. I'll try anyway, but it's not going to work. All right. Yeah, see, that always happens when I try it. But I still have the little cardboard gun that I made for that. And this is it, remember? So the way how this works is, here, the pouch pulls against the lower edge of the card, giving it a twist and shooting it upwards with a nice spin, so it stabilizes. And that's why the uh, fork is directed downwards, so that the barrel will shoot wherever you want to shoot it. And also the barrel gives it some guidance, so that it doesn't wobble very much. And it shoots like that. Not bad, wow! That's pretty fast. Will it stick in the jelly? Well, let's find out. Ha! Huh, I see a cut. I do, I do see a cut. Yes, that is a cut. Interesting. Not very deep though, but it would have hurt for sure. Okay, so if you are running around naked and somebody shoots a thing like this through you, it will hurt. 
<laughs> but that's still not good enough. It's not really weaponizing it. It's just launching it. What we need to do is we need to give it more mass and also more stability. And here is what I found in the hardware store. I found these spatulas. Japanese spatulas, they say. Of course, these are very, very thin and certainly very edgy, but they are completely made from hardened steel. So this is tempered steel, and so they're from flexes. You can even use it to shoot things, of course, which I love. Bing! <laughs> so those are ideal because they won't bend, they will uh, maintain their sharpness, and they were only $2.99 for the whole set. All right, so first, of course, we have to cut off a piece that has the same size as the business cards. Okay. Look at how flexible these pieces are. Ding! Unbelievable. <laughs> these are very terrible scalpel blade blades now. <laughs> Amazing. Look how sharp they are. So, this is a very cool business card now. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> also note that I put the glue a little bit towards the middle, so the corners are free. I did this in the hope that when this hits something solid, like a piece of wood or ballistic gelatin, that the cardboard is going to peel off and the steel remains sharp. Now our steel business card is loaded in. Let's see how it performs. You know, it's too heavy now. It doesn't have enough power. Why is this so weak? I believe that is because the acceleration is so short. See, it sticks in like this and it only ex accelerated for about one inch or something. And then it already has left the pouch. And that definitely for a thing like this, which is almost 15 grams heavy, it's just not enough. We have to accelerate it before we give it spin. And here is my idea. Take the entire gun of course a lighter version of it, put it on a rail, accelerate it to a point where it has serious speed and then automatically trigger it so that the cart is already accelerated and then it flies off. A little bit like shooting from a, uh, from a train that is going forward so that the uh, speed of the ammo and the speed of the train accumulate from the point of view of a bystander. Basically a revival of my slingception. <laughs> Maybe you remember. Okay, so a slingshot in a slingshot on rails and not as heavy as this, still powerful. Can we do it? I think we can. Let me show you what I came up with. Meet Carception. <laughs> a slingshot gun in a slingshot gun. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Now that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, as you see, this is basically the card shooting gun, but made from very, very thin wood. Actually, at some strategic points, I even used a little bit of metal uh, to reinforce it a little bit. And, of course, it has to be lighter because it has to be accelerated and decelerated. So, we have to save mass where we can. And, you know, it sits on rails, and the trigger of the main gun is this little aluminum piece here. And you see, this is the real trigger. So this means that once the sled passes this real trigger, at this point the main shot uh, will, be, will be released. And at that time the sled already has serious speed. So see, now you know we simulate it. So now it's approaching and now the trigger is catching on the aluminum part and buck. <laughs> of course the timing is terribly important. If the release would come too late, when the, the cart is not yet off and the thing hits the rubber stoppers here, like that, see, 
then of course this shot would be decelerated and would probably go wild. But I was using my Kronos high-speed camera that you guys helped financing, thanks for that. And at 1500 frames per second I was able to fine-tune the position, so with a little bit of trial and error I found that this is the sweet spot. So again, the whole thing travels forward, picking up speed, and here the uh, main rubber band is released and the cart gets spin. Okay, it's time for the ballistic gelatin. <laughs> I think it was a bit unfortunate that the cart hit it with the face and not with the edge, but still, look at that cut. Wow. So far, this thing performed rather good, but it still lacks the uh, broad side of the barn test. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, I would say, a good 20 meters away from the barn. Wow! <laughs> Did you see that? I have no idea how far these things fly. Wow! I'm trying it again. This time I'm going to aim a little lower. <laughs> it always sticks. I love it. Okay, steel versus steel. This is hardened, so it should have the better cards. And this is my trusted car door. Let's see what happens. Wow! I think it's only the plastic though. Yeah, okay. It kind of jammed in here. That was probably a lucky shot. See how much the card already suffered? But the steel is absolutely intact. Now, of course, some German wise butts will now say, but that is an illegal throwing star, isn't it? Well, these throwing stars, like Shuriken, are illegal in Germany, but the German law clearly defines what a throwing star is. And it must be a star-shaped flat disc. And this doesn't look like star-shaped to me. Or does it? Okay, I want to find out how far this flies. So, here is my longest test distance. It's 60 meters until the forest. Let's see how it flies. Okay, and go! Wow. It made it into the forest. I'm probably never going to find that card again. <laughs> so, poor little Elia has suffered a bit, but I think that's a quality business card. So, cardception, what do I think about it? Well, actually I have to say I'm totally impressed with this design. I did not expect that it would work so well. Um, you can clearly see that the power is much better than the power of just the pistol alone. So this sled acceleration system really, really helps. And it's probably one of the fastest card shooting systems out there. Anyway, I hope you like this, because that's it for today. Bye-bye well, <laughs> business card. <laughs> Thanks and bye-bye. Yeah, that was one too much for the poor business card. <laughs> but, of course, it will be easy to glue another one on it.